everyone, welcome to a special Breaking It All Down vlog for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. I've just gotten out of seeing that, well, semi-just, and want to give my thoughts about that. I am shooting for a spoiler-free review. If you want a spoiler cast, or spoiler view, please let me know in the comments. Also, if you are really interested in particular movies you want me to see or what have you, please back my Patreon. I'm working on making some adjustments to my Patreon support levels, as you no doubt saw in last week's video. And if you're interested in a support level for movie requests or television show requests or that sort of thing, let me know. So, with that out of the way, let's get started with the review. Guardians of the Galaxy 2 picks up at some point unspecified after the events of the last film. It's presumably been a few weeks, months, whatever. Um, we open in Medius res, res with the Guardians taking on a job for a group known as the Sovereign, which are a race of aliens who genetically engineer all that all their people and their stick up the butt jackasses and that sort of thing. And the opening sequence is really well done. I don't want to spoil too much about it. It does involve lots of baby Groot, who is super cute and super adorable. So, yeah, it's definitely that. Now, as far as the rest of the film goes on, what happens is the Guardians, being who they are, manage to torque off the Sovereign with them, and so the Sovereign decide now that we basically end up putting a death mark on the Guardians, and the Guardians have to deal with that. In the meantime, or in addition to this, Peter Quill's father, Ego, the living planet, finds them. And this is actually proper Ego, the living planet. With some differences and some weird stuff going on. I don't want to, again, don't want to spoil too much, but they do a really good job of explaining and setting up a way for why Ego, the living planet, also has a avatar that looks like modern Kurt Russell. And so we have Peter Quill being reunited with his father after two years and learning who his father was and father is and what that means and the relationship his father had with with his mother, mother not just well, it, and, and all sorts of interesting stuff. And that's where this film, like, Guardians of the Galaxy 1, while it was a fun action-adventure romp, also secretly... In between all the great action set pieces and all of the great character moments between the Guardians, we managed to slip in a bunch of world building about the foundation of the Marvel Universe. The bits, the myth, bits of mythology, not just like in the lore sense, but the bits of mythology that really relate to the underpinnings of how the galaxy works, and how the stuff that's been driving in the past few films, like the Infinity Stones, how that came about, and how why that's important, and what that means. And Guardians of the Galaxy 2, Volume 2 definitely does this just as much. We have a bunch of really great character moments. We have the relationship between Peter Quill and his father. We have how that, how being reunited with, the lost, with his long-lost dad, what that means in this relationship with Gamora. With the new character of Mantis and her interactions with Drax, who gets a bunch of great character moments. And Mantis is also a very interesting character. Um, Drax as a character is someone who lots of people with autism definitely, not a lot of people, but people with autism latched onto and recognized a bit of themselves. As someone with autism, I definitely remember there are bits of his character that definitely resonated with me. With Mantis, I can't speak to the experiences of, of women with autism, so I can't say how well those connections work there, but there's definitely certain elements of that with Mantis, and it leads to Drax and Mantis having a definite bonding, not in a romantic sense. They are definitely more platonically friends, particularly, I mean, it's clear over the course of the film that I mean, Drax puts on a front, but he also is still definitely, I mean, 
his wife and daughter were killed by Thanos, and he still hurting from that. He's not, like, ang- super angsty or that sort of thing. But there's elements of this where, like, he's got grief that's still going on, and he's not showing it. And let's see where the character side of the story goes, because the Guardians and many members of the supporting cast, Yondu, that sort of thing, you know, do Nebula, are people with, tra- if not tragic backstories, but they're broken people with who had rough lives. And they're dealing with that, and this story has them basic... This is the story where they deal with their baggage in a action-adventure romp kind of way. Therapy through firepower, basically. And it works really well. The characters we get, the moments we get, are excellent. There's a bit with Yondu and Rocket. A bunch of bits which are just really strongly done. And I really, really enjoyed these these character bits. But again, also, underneath this, we have a massive amount of world building that's done, too, in a very subtle and discreet fashion, which is setting up, hopefully, stuff that will pay off really well in Avengers Infinity War. We'll see how this actually plays out, but it's going to be interesting. Again, not giving spoilers here, but there's stuff here that if you're wanting to get all the world building bits and you think, oh, this is going to be a little standalone thing, it's not going to contribute to the overall construction of the Avengers world, of the Marvel Universe world, and you're not getting any necessary world building here, see this movie. There is some significant stuff that happens. Stanley Cameo, also fantastic. As always, a couple other really neat cameos there, and a neat guest appearances by actors who are significantly name of significant name and with significant weight to their role, even if, even though it's fairly brief. That I'm hoping that we get some interesting spin-off stuff outside of this, either in Guardians of the Galaxy three with these groups of characters interacting with. Peter Quill and the Guardians, or in terms of actually, this group of people could probably merit their own standalone film. You'll know, you'll get it when you see it. So, oh, that's the basic no spoiler take. Um, I would recommend, though the soundtrack is already out there, holding off on listening to the soundtrack until you've seen the film. Once you've seen the film, go f- go for it. Because there are some really significant musical... Musical notes is the wrong word, and, <laughs> and perhaps a bit too on the nose and an unintentional pun, but musical moments with the use of the, of the catalog soundtrack, of the songs in the soundtrack, that work great when you don't see them coming. So, and in some cases where there are songs you know they're going to be on the soundtrack, particularly because they've been used heavily in the promotional materials, where getting them in their context is important, or context in the case of certain songs which have callbacks throughout in the film, that are important. So, that's the main beats there. I strongly recommend seeing this film, especially before Infinity War. I saw the film in 3D. The 3D effects are okay. It's a, it's a post-conversion film, or at least in a bunch of scenes. Um, they definitely some shots of the stuff coming towards the camera, and those work okay. There's a few shots where the depth of field... If I'm doing depth of field, except with my hands popping like this, where the depth of field stuff doesn't quite work, where it feels like less like these are two people on a set and more two people standing in front of a matte painting, which is unfortunate. That's not what you want with depth of field. And so that's an issue. Scope of the film would definitely merit and benefit from seeing an IMAX. I did not see an IMAX. I probably, if not for certain scheduling reasons, wish I had had the opportunity to see it in IMAX. But, again, on the other hand, and related to this, seeing it in IMAX requires also seeing it in 3D. There is no non-3D IMAX screenings in my area. 
So there's that bit as well. Any trail as far as trailer notes go, we had a new trailer for the new Pirates of the Caribbean movie. It looks okay. We have a bit of backstory for the film's antagonist. Eh, it's all right. Other than that, uh, we got three trailers for Star Wars: The Last Jedi. The it, it's the trailer we got from from uh, Star Wars Celebration, but it's in 3D now, and it definitely it gets a lot more weight to it and benefits a bunch from having it in 3D. So. That is, that's a very nice trailer to see in 3D. However, it'll also probably be showing with other 3D movies as well. And the trailer we got for Thor Ragnarok. Again, the same trailer we've seen that's come out already, just in 3D now. Looks great, but if you're seeing other 3D movies, it will also probably be playing in front of that as well. That pretty much covers that. Did you enjoy Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2? If so, please post your thoughts in the comments below. And please refrain from spoilers for the film at least until, let's say, two weeks out from the film's release. So let's say, last, like second to last week of May, end of May. Actually, or let's say end of May. When we get into we get into June, early June, feel free to go wild. But in, for for May, hold off on the comments. Well, hold off on the spoilers in the comments. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like this video and subscribe to the channel to be notified when new videos come out. If there's something in particular you'd like to see me cover or just want to get your name in the credits or otherwise help the show, please support my Patreon. Once again, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.